Hello, hi and Namaskara. My name is Kirtan and I am a second year medical student studying in a government medical college. Today I will be going to start a new unit that is CVS or cardiovascular system. It is one of the longest and the most important unit in the physiology. So in this video we will be talking about the properties of the cardiac muscle. Since cardiac muscle is a special muscle fiber different than the skeletal muscle, it has many special properties. So some of the main properties of the cardiac muscle are automaticity, rhythmicity, long refractory period, all or none law, staircase phenomenon, length tension relationship, conductivity, contractility, excitability and distensibility and many more such properties of cardiac muscle are there. In this video we will be studying about 6 main properties of the cardiac muscle that are the automaticity, rhythmicity, long refractive period, all or none law, staircase phenomenon and length tension relationship. So let's start with the automaticity. The heart beats irrespective of the external stimulation. This is the automaticity feature of the cardiac muscle. So therefore it is called as the automaticity property of the cardiac muscle. So it happens due to the presence of SA node which is also called as the primary pacemaker. It generates spontaneous impulses which causes this automaticity. So next one property of the cardiac muscle is the rhythmicity. Even though the heart pumps automatically, it pumps regularly or rhythmically. It is due to again the presence of the SA node or primary pacemaker of the heart. The SA node pumps at the rate of 60 to 100 BPM or beats per minute, which also causes the heart to normally beat at 60 to 100 beats per minute. There are even more pacemakers like AV node and his Purkinje fibers. These are called as the secondary pacemakers. Why is the SA node called as the primary pacemaker and the AV node and his Purkinje fibers called as the secondary pacemaker? Because the pacemaker which has the highest frequency in producing the impulses, they become the primary pacemaker. So since the SA node has the highest frequency in producing the generation impulses, they are the primary pacemaker. If this SA node fails, the, the rhythmicity takes place due to the AV node and then again the Hisperkinji fibers if the AV node fails. So this is the hierarchy of the pacemakers. So now let's talk about the next feature of the or property of the cardiac muscle that is the long refractory period. What is the refractory period first of all? Refractory period is nothing but the time period in which the muscle does not react to any external stimuli and there is no change in the magnitude of the contraction. So this is known as the resting phase of the muscle. So the cardiac muscle has a long refractory period due to which the tetanization of the cardiac muscle does not happen easily or it doesn't happen at all. So why does this happen? The action potential Action potential is 250 milliseconds duration in the heart muscle, whereas it's 5 milliseconds in the skeletal muscle. So this act action potential in the heart muscle, which is 250 milliseconds, is almost equal to the mechanical response time, and 5 milliseconds is very less. So since the action potential is almost equal to the mechanical response time, the refractory period will be more and it will extend to the mechanical response. So you can see in this graph, so this is the absolute refractory period and relative refractory period. So as you know I have talked about it in the nerve muscle physiology unit that refractory period can be divided into absolute refractory period and relative refractory period. So here you can see that the, the action potential of the cardiac muscle, it takes place and exchange to the mechanical response. So here the re relative refractory period ends. So it almost covers up the mechanical response and even if you provide action potential in this period there will be no stimulation. So action potential generates a new mechanical response in the cardiac muscle. Whereas in the skeletal muscle the mechanical response can be changed if the action potential is given because the duration of the action potential is less than the heart muscle. So there will be production of the again one more mechanical response and tetanization ca can be possible in the skeletal muscle. Tetanization is possible in this. 
so this acts as a safety measure for the heart so that the tetanization does not take place and it can beat in the rhythmic fashion normally so now let's talk about the staircase phenomenon this is one of the special features of the cardiac muscle so here you can see it there is the graph of magnitude of contraction in the heart muscle of the frog so in this graph you can see that the these are the contractions the magnitude increases progressively so why does this happen this happens due to the staircase phenomenon what is the staircase phenomenon actually so when the stable heart muscle is stimulated repeatedly at the interval of less than 10 seconds there will be rapid rise in the progressive contractions of the heart muscle so this is called as the staircase phenomenon so you can define it as when the heart muscle is stimulated rapidly at an interval of less than 10 seconds there will be progressive rise in the magnitude of contraction of the heart muscle of contraction so why does this actually happens what is the mechanism behind this so the mechanism of staircase phenomenon can be explained by three ways the first one is the calcium so when the contraction of the muscle takes place at the for initial stages there will be some calcium left inside the muscle fibers so this residual calcium molecules helps in the further contraction and further more increase in the magnitude of the contraction so this is the mechanism by the calcium one so the next one is the enzymatic mechanism so when you apply the stimulation rapidly less than the 10 seconds interval there will be rise in the temperature in the myocardial cells of the muscle fibers so when there is rise in the temperature of this muscle fibers there will be activation of the enzymes so this acts as a beneficial effect and then further increases the contraction of the progressive contractions so the next one is the decreased friction or viscosity viscosity so this is again due to the rise in the temperature when the contraction is takes place so when the contraction takes place there will be rise in temperature and there will be decreased viscosity in the sacroplasm so due to the decreased viscosity in the sacroplasm there will be more rapid magnitude of the contraction and increased magnitude of the contraction so this is the mechanism of the staircase phenomenon now let's talk about the length tension relationship this is also called as frank sterling law frank sterling law so how can you define this so the force of contraction the force of contraction is directly proportional to the initial length initial length of the muscle fibers so this is within the physiological limit within physiological limit so whenever there is increase in the length of the muscle fiber there will be more increase in the force of the contraction so when there is more end diastolic volume end diastolic volume so end diastolic volume nothing means the blood accumulated in the ventricles after the diastolic phase for it to be pushed out of the heart so this the when there is more end diastolic volume there will be more stroke volume 
Stroke volume is nothing but the volume of the blood ex, uh, pumped up by the heart per minute. So when there is more endiastolic volume, there will be stretching of the muscle fibers of the heart. So there is increase in the length of the muscle fibers due to which the force of contraction is increased and there will be more stroke volume or there, there will be more pushing of the blood from the heart. So more endiastolic volume is directly proportional to the more stroke volume. This is also called as the Frank Sterling law as I told before. Now let's talk about one more last phenomenon that is all or none phenomenon. All or none phenomenon. I have talked about this phenomenon in the nerve muscle physiology unit also. So this phenomenon states that the response of the muscle tissue towards a stimuli remains same irrespective of the strength of the stimuli. So it means that whenever you increase the stimuli or there is supra stimuli stimuli there will be no change in the magnitude of the contraction. It will be same irrespectively. So if you decrease the stimuli there will be no contraction itself. Here there will be same contraction. There will be same contraction as seen in the normal stimuli in the normal or threshold stimuli so when only when you apply the threshold stimuli to the muscle fiber there will be some contraction and it will be same irrespective if you increase the stimuli but whenever if you decrease the stimuli less than the threshold stimuli there will be no contraction so this is the all or none phenomenon so this is the end of the video if you have found this video informative, please like, share and comment and also don't forget to subscribe. I will be uploading this type of videos in the coming time. So please stay connected. Thank you.